might be all we know. How can you search the citation index if the paper is too recent to have been cited? Well, simply turn to the bibliography in this current paper and then select one or more references in the bibliography as starting points in the citation index search. For example, look up this paper and enter the citation index under Robinson GW. You will find it is cited by Diamant and a dozen other authors. By continuing this procedure, we can locate about 75 relevant papers from 28 journals. This rather comprehensive search was accomplished in about three hours' time, including the time required to type the entire bibliography. Once the starting references were specified, the effort was entirely clerical. A comprehensive search of this kind, however, is usually conducted only when one is about to launch a major project. Suppose, on the other hand, you wish to follow a very specific concept in the SCI. In this particular case, the scientist could have said, let's narrow the search down to one aspect of this problem. For example, in the paper by Diamant, there is the following quotation. Another possible interpretation of the observations reported here would be based on recent studies of the crystal structure of argon containing an impurity. Right after the quotation, there is a reference to the work of C.S. Barrett. Simply look up the symbol for the C.S. Barrett reference in the citation index. In a few minutes, you would find four references to supplement the Barrett article. Two of them appeared in 1965 and two in 1964. The citation index is ideally suited for searching methodology. Consider this quotation from the Diamant paper, where cautious filter is mentioned. Simply look up the reference for Kasha's original paper from the 1948 Journal of the Optical Society, and you obtain a complete bibliography of papers in which that method has been employed. These papers appeared in a wide variety of journals, and you would have searched the whole spectrum of traditional discipline-oriented indexing services in vain to find most of these papers. Using the SCI, the complete search was done by a clerk in about 30 minutes. As a final example of using the citation index in a routine fashion, let's consider this medical example. As in every search of the citation index, one must define a subject by one or more starting references. In the SCI, one finds the papers that had cited the items in the starting bibliography. Consider the following 1959 paper by J.S. Thompson on the problem of serum cholesterol levels in heart patients. To perform this specific search by traditional word searching methods, one would have to examine this array of subject headings under which hundreds of articles would be listed, but most of them would be quite far removed from this very specific topic. However, by entering the SCI with this reference by J.S. Thompson as the key to the topic, one immediately identifies a few papers on this specific topic. In particular, this paper by W.D. Brown, which appeared in the Medical Journal of Australia. Again, I wish to emphasize that this search could be done for you by one of your assistants in a few minutes. I've shown you how the Science Citation Index can be used to conduct retrospective searches on a wide variety of topics. However, as rapidly as we publish our quarterly indexes, there is always an inher inherent time lag of a few months. To fill in this gap and keep you currently up to date on specific topics, ISI also operates its automatic subject citation alert. ASCA is a service which complements the Science Citation Index 
on a week-to-week -week basis. ASCA is a computer-based system for the selective dissemination of information to individual scientists. In order to provide this kind of service to individuals, it is, of course, necessary for you to construct a profile of your individual interests. Here's an ASCA profile entry form. In this particular case, the profile topic is enzymes as food additives. First, the subscriber listed a group of specific papers on this topic. Then he listed a number of key words, word stems, and phrases. When we receive the profile, the ASK system will alert him to particular papers appearing each week on this topic. There are two duplicate copies. You retain the file copy. The other copy is marked and returned to ISI to obtain desired articles. Here is another ASCA report for a scientist interested in the topic of chemical evolution. In this case, the subject is extremely difficult to prescribe by a word profile. And there are many subjects of this kind. Citation indexing overcomes the basic difficulties in preparing such profiles. However, there are other topics for which word profiles are quite useful. Consider the topic of dimethyl sulfoxide. It is possible to anticipate many pertinent papers on DMSO by a simple word profile. But there are many useful papers on DMSO that would not be anticipated by words, but will be picked up by citation indexing. For example, this paper in the Finnish Chemical Journal concerning ethylene oxide. As another example, consider the topic, Hydrolysis of Hindered Esters by Lithium Halides and Pyridine an extremely difficult profile question to search by traditional methods. Nevertheless, based on a single key citation, the ASCA system easily retrieved these papers. Searches of this kind illustrate the versatility of citation indexing in fields such as organic chemistry. To ensure your tranquility, an ASCA report is mailed even though no new information has been uncovered. In fact, many subscribers are quite pleased to obtain such reports, particularly those involved in proprietary projects. The scientist is not always deliriously happy to learn that his original idea has been anticipated by someone else. I said at the outset that the cost of modern information services should be regarded as an insurance investment to prevent loss of time, energy, and money. Now I'd like to substantiate that claim with a concrete example found in the literature. I'd like to point out that it's not so easy to find examples of this kind because most duplications are exposed long before publication. Whether or not the duplication occurred during the preparation of a PhD dissertation, a patent application, or a journal article, and we all know cases of this kind, the loss is always painful. In 1962, this paper appeared in the Journal of Biological Chemistry. The work was done by a reputable pharmaceutical company and concerned a reagent for the detection of nitrogen-containing compounds. On the last page, five references were cited by the authors of this paper. I've circled the four key references. If the SCI had been available at that time, any clerk could have determined that this paper from analytical chemistry had been published in 1958. Of the eight papers cited, I've also circled the four papers later cited in the 1962 paper. This paper was a complete anticipation of the 1962 JBC work, 
as acknowledged in a correction note. Also published in the 1962 JBC. In the correction note, the authors state that their work was published without knowledge on their part or on the part of the editors that the previous paper existed. And I might add that the referees were equally uninformed. But this is not the end of the story. In the past few years, through our ASCA service, I have located